Hello folks and welcome. Filming in 1080. You can adjust your YouTube player if necessary. Um, subscription logo is in the corner, a person with yellow brackets if you'd like to subscribe and if you did I'll say welcome. I have well over 500 videos on all kinds of subject matter. Today I'm going to talk about um, what Linux Mint has on all their desktop as a backup tool to do system restores and that is called Time Shift. Now that this video was requested by a subscriber because uh, the subscriber was saying I don't think everybody understands that that tool doesn't uh, by default back up your personal files. It doesn't. So I'm going to point that out to you during this video but I'm going to cover the subject of time shift. I have an older video but a lot of people don't like to click on older video sometimes. So one of the things about me is English is my second language and I have subscribers all over planet Earth and I speak slower than some. I don't speed read. I also demo everything that I have subject for all my 500 plus videos and this is no exception. I also uh, will repeat myself for emphasis also but since I can appreciate that and hopefully others can not also if they're non English speaking. So we're going to talk about this tool called Time Shift. This is also found on your installation media, whether you use the DVD or the um, USB stick installation. All right, so that's you can click it open here. I'm going to go to the shield over here. The other day I talked about upgrading Linux Mint 22 to 22.1, and I advocated that you make a snapshot using Time Shift and over here will be, um, if you've done all your updates, we'll say upgrade, if I haven't upgraded yet. If you haven't seen my video on that, go find it. All my videos are searchable with that magnifying glass on my YouTube channel in the center. Maybe I should do a video on that one of these days. Anyways, snapshots. Another name for that is time shift. Our user for today is Sam. It's just a made up name. We need to authenticate ourselves when we do this. So Sam's password. And we'll open the box. Now, before I hit authenticate, I'm going to warn you that this yellow mouse pointer that I'm using is called Radioactive and I installed it manually and I have videos on this. Uh, when I get into this box, that mouse cursor will also alternate between that yellow thing and a black one. And you can see the black one right there. As soon as I move out of the window, you can see it change. All right, um, we can just close that for now and then I'll explain this complete box. So during the installation process, a little blast of time here for some of you folks, and maybe it's recent for others, but you were asked to activate that tool, time shift or system snapshots. That's the T. And that tool is also found on other distributions, but it's found on all the Linux Mint desktops. Okay. So you were asked by the wizard to walk through some of these things. And then at the end, you have a blank box. And then you closed it, and then a week later, you decided to go come in here and check it, and you have five of these without comments. Okay, so you can actually put comments in there. But keep in mind, in about two weeks, those will go away because uh, of my settings. It's generally defaulted to five. But let me start at the bottom. Time shift is active. That shield is green. That means the tool is running silently in the background. So if you log in after you install Linux Mint, it doesn't matter which flavor, it's Cinnamon, Mate, or XFCE, you logged into your system religiously for about five to ten minutes every day for about a week. You should have five of those if you kept the default settings. It'll tell you how old the latest, uh, la latest snapshot and the oldest. And you can see the dates up there, 116 and 121. So the other thing you'll notice is different letters. Now there's uh, the D here, and then down here is the O. O is on demand. That means I manually created that. The D would be daily. If you activate it in your settings, and I'll get to that, you may see B, H, W, or M. That would be boot, hourly, weekly, monthly. Most people do not need those. Number of snapshots currently being displayed are five. What is rsync? rsync is remote sync. 
okay, if you did not know. I also have videos on rsync for some medium to advanced users using also rsync to back up your personal files. I have one that actually only uses two lines of script, but the, line, the number of lines in there are four because two of them are used to describe the action. But Linux Mint uses rsync by default on this if your formatted drive is extension four. All right, we have the available disk space on that drive on SDA partition two. Generally, that is your booted in drive, generally. All right, so we have five of these. And uh, two weeks from now, you may not even see these anymore because it's gonna cycle these. Okay, so we have manually creating, which I did over here with that O on it. Then we can restore some of these. So this is the 21st and that's the 16th. And I can click the restore and five, 10 minutes later, you're back to where you were. So if you have some difficulty logging in and you may want to try to restore your system, you can do that with your installation media, either USB stick or DVD. Just boot up your system that way, open up the Mint menu and look for the time shift tool. Click it, it won't require a password and allow the wizard to open and just click um, you know, finish and it should scan your drive for restore points in case your drive is healthy, of course. If the drive is totally wasted, then not so much. All right, so in either case, we can restore there also. Um, the delete is used in case you don't want to use the default five, and I don't recommend going below two. All right, so that's what the delete is used for. If you delete anything, may I suggest changing your settings also, which we'll get into in a minute. The default is five. Uh, the browse is more for advanced users, but more importantly, you can see these kind of uh, restore points here. This is Nemo, the file manager in root mode currently. All right, so I'm not really gonna cover that in this video. So the settings are here and the wizard is here. The wizard is what starts the first time you open this tool. And generally people go through it and hit close with a blank menu. And then five, seven days later, they have a bunch of these. So let's talk about settings. So this one by default it's using remote sync or rsync. The location uh, generally is a single hard drive, but you can see that it's using that drive SDA2 extension four. Now the schedule becomes important to understand. If, if you click that earlier and you clicked on all of these monthly, weekly, hourly, and boot, it makes for a lot of hard drive space. Everything takes space when you start adding stuff. Generally, by default, keeping five is your best option. However, for some of you folks that are running low, uh, in other words, uh, limited hard drives, I would uh, not go below two if you want to minus some of those out. And at the same token, I will close this. If you decide to reduce that to three and you deleted these, if you didn't adjust your settings, they'll come back to five. Just because you deleted them, doesn't mean the system's not going to replace those eventually because your schedule says five. Clear on this, hopefully? Okay. So we're staying on the schedule right now. So again, you can reduce that. And then you can eliminate some of the older ones. I don't recommend going below two though. Okay. Um, some of you folks that run servers know what cron is, and I'm really not going to get into that. I do have a personal server at on my network that I use also what they call cron jobs by default. But again, I'm not gonna just leave that default. All right, so here's the important part. The user requested this video because he didn't understand this process. And I'm sure a lot of you folks do not. So they normally will keep this. Not realizing the fact that Sam, our made up name user today, Hit all of his home folder stuff is not being included by time shift. It's making snapshots of his system files, not your personal. That's why at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about personal backups. What if you include that takes up a lot of space? Also, Linux Mint by default, put this in there for you. And I would suggest you keep that. We can do backups in many, many ways for personal backups. 
So if you've got six users in there, you'll have all of them being excluded. All right, just keep that in mind. I only have the one and the root. So we're excluding, not including those files. It's very important to understand. But once we activate these, your backups will become enormous. And on your first one, you'll need to stay logged in a little bit longer than normal. Filter. Exclude patterns. Those are a little bit more custom adjustments. All right, so five of these. So if you decide to delete three of these, you make sure you adjust your settings in here and change that. Clear on that? Okay. So wizard again is normally initiated when you first open this after install. The hamburger menu are your time locks. And the typical one looks like that. So generally, hopefully this is understood. Now let's talk about your files. Sam is our user for today, and Sam has all of these things. So what we can do is use the personal tool called Backups. And we can do the software first and then personal data. Where is this going to store this by default? Well, in your Documents Backup folder. The system generally creates that too, if it's missing, I believe. but. I will do the software first and let you see it appear over here. It'll be a dot list when it gets done. You can keep the default. You can also deselect things. Okay, well, let's take a peek at it. Now you can see what that looks like. All right, since the hamburger menu does not provide me with backup, in other words, a backup key to go back to my main menu, I hit quit and reopen the tool. Just type in back and you should be able to find it. Now we'll talk about this top one. Backup now. Default is the backup folder. And um, you can change that, but if you leave the default, that's where it's gonna be located. You cannot exclude this. You can't remove that because you can see it's grayed out, but you can um, exclude other folders or otherwise known as directories or files. You can also include hidden stuff for your more advanced users if you have a need for that. And it's going to be making a tar file. Now, what is tar? Tape archive. Tape archive has been around a long time, kind of like me. So what's in the box? What's in the tar ball? Generally referred to as a tar ball. It's just not compressed. So documents, junk, music, pictures, share one, two, and videos, and this file called meta mint, number of files. What you won't find in here is folders that don't have anything in them, like my backup folder is not in here. My desktop is not in here. My downloads is not in here. My templates is not in here because it has no items in them. So it doesn't copy that, but if you want if you create personal folders with nothing currently in them and you want a backup of it using the same method, then I would suggest using your powerful features in your file manager. Okay, so let me discuss that. So your file manager Nemo has had this capability for a long time. I'm going to use control A as an apple and I'm going to be making a full backup of all the visible folders that you see, including the one that's sitting inside of this documents folder. Right click on any one of these things and hit the compression tool. But I'm not going to use compression, but I can. Compression is most of these tools are compressed all the way down to zip. Maybe you've heard of that one. Now, most Windows users also know what zip is. But tar tape archive is not compressed by default. So we're making a static backup. We're capturing this in time which is right now. So I'm going to use the word backup with today's date provided by that convenient desklet calendar. These are extremely easy to install, but only available on the cinnamon desktop. All right, so 21 and 25. When I hit create, it'll um, create a cryptic looking file and then change to whatever name you gave it. Okay, and you can see the cryptic name and then it'll finish. 
3.6 gigabyte. That includes also this backup that I just did earlier. That's why that's so big. But what if you only wanted a couple of things? So first of all, I'll let you see what's in the box. It included those zero byte folders because I told it to, to make copies of these. Everything's in here. But let's say you just wanted a couple of ones. So I'm going to do documents, hold down my control key and select pictures and music. Maybe that's all the three folders I needed for personal backups. Right click, do the same thing. And again, I'm going to keep tar, but I can select compressed tar also. Okay, that is all up to you. So I'm going to call this mini me, no, actually mini, <laughs> mini backup and put today's date on it. And hit go, create. Okay, that one's done. It's a little smaller, not by much though. So you can probably tell where bulk, the bulk of most of the bigger files are located. 3.6, 2.4. Depending on your viewpoint, you may not see that. I'm holding down the control key while scrolling. And you can also use the little drag bar. All right, so what's in the mini? Three folders. So this one here has all the files, but let me give you an example of something that can happen. Let's say uh, by accident, you uh, deleted that Adam, whatever that file, it's a PDF. All right, you hit the delete key, it's gone. You don't notice it though. And then sometime tomorrow, whatever, you're emptying your trash. So a couple of days later, you realize the fact that when you went into your documents folder, it's no longer there and you panic. You go to the trash and you say, oh yeah, I, I deleted it. But I was smart enough to make a backup earlier. So open this thing up. One of the things that I want you to understand about tar backups, you don't have to extract everything. You can do individual files and you can drag and drop them either here or on your desktop or whatever folder you have open. I'm going to do it right here. So I'm going to open up this document thing and find that file, which I deleted by accident. And there it is. Then I can drag it to my documents folder. But you can also do multiples. To give you that example, we will um, find this blank backup folder. It's just convenient. I'm going to take my mouse and uh, basically select multiples. And then drag five of these objects in here. I'm not extracting everything. I'm just doing some. So that's nice and convenient. Delete. I don't really need those. So my other suggestion is if you can afford an internal drive, great on your tower computers. If you can't, uh, let's say it's a laptop, um, you can more than likely afford a USB stick. Now, if your USB sticks are formatted with, um, with FAT32, let me open up the USB stick tool for a second. Uh, I'm going to point that little circle there. So FAT32 cannot handle files larger than four gigabytes. That would be single files. Then I would format it with extension four. If that tar file exceeds four gigabytes. Remember, you're trying to copy that onto a stick. But since your drive is maybe formatted with FAT32, the 3.6 will fit on there and certainly the 2.4. But if this said 4.2, uh, you better have a different format on your USB stick. So lots of little tips for you. I have other videos on my YouTube site and thank you for watching.